Happy Mother's Day. I think we've said that multiple times, and, and we really mean it from the bottom of our, of our hearts. Uh, so I want to say Happy Mother's Day not only to you moms here that are in attendance, but to all the moms that happen to be listening online uh, to, to this uh, sermon, to this talk. Uh, may our Lord continue um, to, to grace you in the work that you do and give you rest as well as you rest in him. That is my prayer for you. So as many of you uh, know that we started a new series in April, and I've called it uh, Between the Lines, and so far we've covered things like wisdom and self-control as the two lines. We've covered knowledge and humility. Uh, Last week we talked about prayer and perspective. So I have to tell you that I, I, I... Today, I've decided, um, the way it came about, uh, figuring out what we're going to talk about today, I want to tell you a little bit about that. I was at Goodwill, and I went to Goodwill to to, uh, rejuvenate my wardrobe, if you know what I mean. Um, So I went to Goodwill, and I saw a mug, and this mug on the side said, all mom wants is some peace and quiet. (laughs) I was almost going to buy it. Um, and, and it's like, oh, I'm not going to buy it. I have tons of mugs. Uh, well, I went back and it was gone. Uh, but it said, all moms want is some peace and quiet. Now, some of you moms, can you relate? Uh, yeah, can you relate? Uh, some of you that are not moms would be like, oh, I could use a bit of that too. You know, <laughs> I could use some, some peace and quiet. Well, I'm hoping that this morning I have something special from the Lord for you today. Because I believe that um, I was led to speak about work and rest. Work and rest. So, guess what? Happy Mother's Day. Work and rest. (laughs) Um, Now, in previous messages, as I was covering uh, these kinds of lines... Uh, for like work and rest, we found that between the lines, between the lines, we discover grace. We discover grace. That's right. Between the lines, we find grace. So there it is. There's, <laughs> there's my sermon. At least you know the conclusion to my, to my sermon. That's the punchline. Between work and rest, we find grace grace. But this morning, what I want to do is I'd like to show you how I got here, how I discovered grace in the rhythm of work and rest, work followed by rest, rest followed by work. Now, perhaps some of you might be thinking, man, I can't wait until I retire. Woo, if I retire, then I won't have to worry about work at all. Who invented work anyway? I mean, my goodness, really? Slave in a wind? Who, whose bright idea was it? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, let me show you how I arrived at grace. And I'd like to show you my actual notes. These are the notes that I took. So please pardon my handwriting. I, I, and I, and I'll, I brought it with me. It's, it's, it's right here. These are, these are the notes. For how I arrived at grace. These are my, my sermon notes. If you want to take a look at them afterwards, by all means, I'll, I'll have them out here. But I started in Proverbs chapter 8. So would you please turn to Proverbs chapter 8 in your scriptures. Now, if you have an online Bible, by all means, you know, electronic like I do. Uh, if not, there are some uh, Bibles in the pews. Go ahead and turn to Proverbs Chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. One thing about um, the electronic Bible, all you have to do is search, click. With a paper one, you have to sort of shuffle around, but that's okay. That's okay. Look for it. Uh, By the way, uh, an easy way to find Proverbs is you go go to the uh, glossary, to the table of contents, and you find Proverbs right there. All right, so Proverbs chapter 8. Now, what is Proverbs chapter 8 all about? Well, uh, first of all, Proverbs chapter 8 personifies wisdom as she gives an insightful monologue. Uh, 
In other words, the author writes as if wisdom was a person and she was talking to all of us. In her monologue, wisdom calls out to us and tells us how valuable she is and what an amazing thing it would be if we all had, if we all had a bit of wisdom. And then in the chapter, we reach verse 22. And that's where I like to start. She gives us a little insight into her past, into wisdom's past. Listen to what she says, starting in verse 22. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. Can you imagine? Can you picture in your mind wisdom calling out, The Lord brought me forth. As the first of his works. Well, it really should not surprise us uh, to understand that wisdom was uh, God's companion at the creation of the world. In uh, the Gospel of John, St. John uh, starts out his gospel in John chapter 1 1. Uh, he starts out as follows In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Friends, this is the word of God. The word of reason. The word of wisdom. Logos is the word. That's where we get logic. Uh, verse 3. Through him all things were made. Through him nothing was made that was, has not been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Can you imagine? Can you picture in your mind wisdom calling out? The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago. At the very beginning when the world came to be. Now starting in verse 24, wisdom really gets specific. Look what she says. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs or flowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. So this brings me to my very first boundary line. My very first line, and I'm sure you guessed it, <laughs> it's work. It's work. And I was reminded that our God, our God is a working God. Genesis chapter 1 tells us about it. He says that in the beginning God created. He's the one that said, let me put some work into this. Let me get busy and create. Any artist will tell you that creating something is work. It's pleasurable work, and sometimes hard work, but it's work. So I spent some time thinking and wrestling with the fact that God was, is a working God who wanted his creation to work also. Do you realize? Ah, so when you think about, boy, who invented work? You got a big guy to blame. Go ahead. You can raise your fist to him. He's the one that invented work. He even showed us how to work. And of course, as I was reflecting on work, I thought of all the moms who day in, day out, work and work and work and work. In our own household, I think Jenny did five loads of laundry yesterday. Was it five? Six, oh, six loads of laundry in one day. Lord have mercy. Work and work. Now you realize when they work, 
When moms work, they imitate God in that perspective. Because he worked. So ladies, when you work, you actually catch a glimpse of God. So I wondered to myself, I, I thought, okay, uh, how, how does God work? What does he do? How, how, perhaps there might be something that we can learn from him. Perhaps there's some way that, in the way that he works that might be helpful for us. So if you're a mom who perhaps feels that at times life throws too much work at you, I want to share with you three observations from our passage in Proverbs chapter 8 that encouraged me personally. And I'm hoping that perhaps it might encourage you as well. Now, those of you that are not moms, that's okay. You can listen in. That's all right. You'll, you, I'm sure there may be something in there for you as well. So go ahead, listen in, catch a glimpse of what the Lord might have for you this morning. So here's the first observation. The first observation is that God worked with wisdom. God worked with wisdom. You've heard the expression to work smarter, not harder, right? Well, in the text, we see the quintessential smart working. Nothing that God created was out of place. Nothing that God created had to be redone. Nothing that God created had to be brought in for repairs. He created with wisdom, with purpose. Even the chaos that we seem to, to observe in the universe, scientists tell us that there is an amazing order and design to everything. Amazing design. He created with wisdom. When we look at creation, if we are willing to, we can see, you can sense the wisdom that went into all that we can observe and study in our world, in our universe. So if you want to know more about how God works, we can see that He worked and He works and He will work with wisdom. With wisdom. But He also works with cooperation with cooperation now look in in the, our text if you look in verse 27 of our text look what wisdom says i was there i was there i can almost imagine wisdom jumping up and down oh guess what i was there i was there i was where there when it all happened that's right i mean i was there when and he did this amazing interview on TV. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. I was there when we had that huge snowstorm here when we first had our launch service. And everybody got stuck. And Gary had to go and grab and rescue Jenny from snowbank somewhere. I was there. How exciting. Folks, you are here today. You are at the groundbreaking level of agape starting up and being this amazing power of, for God in this area. You're here. One day you'll be able to say, I was there. I was there. I was part of it. Well, wisdom says, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon. And in verse 30, wisdom says, then I was constantly at his side. I was constantly at his side. Now, I want to highlight a little bit about this. Some of the translations have it, I was the architect at his side. Ooh. I was the, art the artisan. I was the artisan at his side. Now, interestingly enough, in some Context, that same word can be translated as the little child at his side. The creative little child that there's no boundaries and perhaps God in his wisdom teaches wisdom. It's wisdom. Have you ever thought of that? God had to teach wisdom, wisdom, like a little child. But wisdom is super excited. She's like, I was there. I was the companion. I was the architect. I was the artisan. I was like a little child bringing forth creation. 
Do you see wisdom at the Lord's side? There seems to be a good relationship between them, doesn't it? At least the text indicates that. There's cooperation that takes place. Have you ever considered cooperation? What it takes? Well, I'd like to explore cooperation a little bit this morning. And to do so, I'm going to invite Lisa and Nate to come up here because I want them to share how they cooperated as they prepared in, to step into this big thing they're doing. And they're going to tell us all about it. Why don't you guys come up here? And, and I'll have this mic uh, going for you guys. And I'm going to hang on to this mic and never let go of this mic uh, because I was, I was taught that once you have the mic, you don't let go of it. All right, so let's start. This is brilliant. This is wonderful right here. Okay, so um, what I want to know is I want you guys to tell me a little bit about this big step that you guys are taking. At least I'm going to start with you, okay? Oh, I'm hanging on to it. <laughs> So this summer, we are inviting two boys from the Ukraine who are orphans to spend some time in our home. So that's a big deal, isn't it? Yeah. That's a big deal. All right. Now, here's a question for you, Nate. Whose idea was it? Both of ours. Well, not really either of ours, actually. Uh, how did this start? Um, more of a whisper. Okay. Who brought it first to the table? This exact idea, it would be Lisa. You brought this to the table. And what was your reaction, initial? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Cooperation? Interesting, okay. How did you get here? Tell me about your journey that brought you here. So we've been considering fostering or adoption um, and this is kind of a middle ground. Um, so this is hosting. It's neither foster or adoption. Um, and so this gives us the opportunity to bring a child in need into our home um, and kind of get a feel for how we can um, do some of God's work and, and maybe bless the child. So that's how it came about. Okay. Okay. Now, Nate, tell me about the sacrifices that you guys are planning to make. Planning or have? Both. <laughs> um, well, I'm eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for next week, all week. Except Wednesday. <laughs> Except well, Wednesday. For lunch. Oh, for, for lunch. lunch. Okay, yes. So, yes. All right. Um, so we're doing a lot of cutting back on, like we cut back cable, we cut back everything so we could, you know, give more. Mm -hmm. Did you have to dra be dragged into this kicking and screaming? No. You guys talked about it. We did. Quite a bit. Yes. Now, I have learned through social media that there's a new motorcycle for sale. Is that true? This is true. Now, tell me about that motorcycle. I love it. <laughs> okay. And it needs to go. Okay. Whose idea was it? Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that was your idea. Sure. Yes. <laughs> you guys cooperated on this. Yes. Tell me about the process of cooperation and how you decided to get rid of something that you love. And I, by the way, I know how much you love the motorcycle. Um, well, it's just a thing. It's honestly just a thing, and we've come to the conclusion that things are just clutter. And we need to, you know, if it's something that has value and can go somewhere else, and it's better than enjoyment for now excellent thank you guys appreciate you being here do you notice real life cooperation well done you can you can clap <laughs> friends sometimes real life cooperation looks like that uh, that that was as real as raw as you get i didn't prep them i i mean when they walked in i said oh by the way i'm going to talk about cooperation Poor Nate had no idea I was going to talk about his beloved motorcycle. <laughs> He's crying, yes. But do you see cooperation? I'm sure in our own lives, in your life, there are times when we cooperate and there's this give and take. Now here's what blows my mind. What blows my mind is that the Lord of the universe cooperates with us. The Lord of the universe, the creator 
of this cosmos wants to cooperate with you and I. How in the world? If you were the most powerful being in the universe, would you cooperate with yourselves? I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust myself. My limited humanity. And yet, the way God works, He works through wisdom. He works through cooperation. He works in cooperation. So here's a question I want you guys to take with, with you. What is God asking you to cooperate on with him? What is God saying, hey, um, I got something going. Uh, why don't you come along? Let's, let's, let's work on this together. What is God calling you to cooperate with him on? What is the work that you have in front of you? Now, my third observation from the text is that God works not only with wisdom and in cooperation, but God works with joy, with joy. Look at verses 30 and 31, and I want you to hear wisdom. This is what she says. It says, I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind wow that's what i'm talking about that's joy that is delight now watch this first there's delight in his presence right i was filled with delight day after day rejoicing always in his presence which means that we look up that's when we are uplifted and we think, wow, the joy of looking up. But it continues. There's joy rejoicing in the world. And in God's creation, nature rejoices. And nature is not destructive. It's not antagonistic. There's great harmony. Harmony in nature. And finally, there's delight. Can you imagine delight among mankind humanity rejoices with god and with wisdom wouldn't it be awesome if we lived in a world where humanity was delighted to be together wow <laughs> that's how you work i mean wouldn't work be awesome wouldn't work just be an, an amazing pleasure how, you probably want to work all the time if, if you experience that kind of joy, God created with wisdom. God created, God worked, uh, worked in, in cooperation. And he was surrounded by great joy. You know, we, we can learn from that. We can learn from that. Now, if we approached our work with wisdom rather than boredom, with cooperation rather than competition, and with an attitude of joy rather than complaining, perhaps we might experience a glimpse of grace. A glimpse of grace. Now, maybe some of you might say, but you don't know what I have to deal with. You don't know my coworkers. You don't know how heavy the load I have to carry. You don't know how boring my job is. You don't know how toxic the environment that I'm in. You don't realize the momental, monumental darkness that I have to face. Well, and quite honestly, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by that. Actually, quite, you know, we should probably expect that. Why? Because sin entered the world. And now we see wisdom re replaced by shamelessness. And we see cooperation is sabotaged by self-interest and, and self-preservation. And when it comes to joy, we look for it in all the wrong places. Perhaps the Lord in his wisdom made a provision for that as well. Not only did he make a way for us to be reconciled with him, and by the way, that's why we celebrate communion together. That's why we're always reminded of that. I mean, he paid the priceless step that we can experience him. He died so that we can live. But when he comes to work, he showed us the wisdom 
of rest. He showed us the wisdom of rest. God is not only a working God, but he's a God who rested. Now, I've often wondered why did God rest? And I'm not the only one. People have speculated. Why did God rest? He didn't need to. Why did he rest? Perhaps, once again, it's for our benefit. Perhaps it's a way for him to show us the right rhythm. The rhythm of work interrupted by rest, rest interrupted by work. Moms, (laughs) on this Mother's Day, i like you to take for yourself. I want to offer to you to take with you verses 30 and 31. This is a place of rest in the midst of hard work. I want you to think about this. I want you to, to be filled with joy. I was filled with delight day after day. Take that for yourself. Rejoicing always in His presence. Rejoicing in His whole world. And delighting in mankind. Even the mankind that's not very delightful. Between the lines of work and rest, my friends, we find grace. Unmerited grace. Costly. Costly grace. That we may have freely, that we may have abundantly. So we end up living in a life of grace. A life where we can actually offer grace to those who, like us, don't deserve it. A life where we can teach where we can model the grace that the Lord modeled to us and taught us. A life that is similar to what Jesus did, to his life. A life, a life of grace. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, how wonderful it is that you have shown us, you have taught us, you have modeled for us what it is to live in grace. I thank you for that. I thank you that you don't just leave the drudgery of work in our life, that you have provided a way for us to be be rejuvenated. Thank you for the rhythm of work and rest. Thank you for working with wisdom and with cooperation. Thank you, Father, that Jesus has shown us how to be with joy, how to live in joy. And may we do so, Lord. I, may, we, may we work in such a way that people will look and see you in us. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.